Okay, well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for having me here. A special thanks also to Erki and uh, Hardy for uh, this opportunity. Um, so with this presentation, I would like to uh, look at uh, three different types of drilling methods used for mineral uh, exploration. Uh, the main advantages and advantages and disadvantages of each and a short overview of the main features that a uh, drilling rig uh, must have to be able to perform uh, these, uh, these techniques. Uh, the drilling methods I would like to mention uh, are hollow stem auger drilling, reverse circulation drilling by air, and core drilling, both conventional and wireline. Of course, there are actually many, many others, methods and technologies, uh, but I selected these three because, as at least for our experience as a drilling uh, rig manufacturer, these are the most uh, common and requested in uh, mineral researches, uh, at least in the last years, so recently. Um, so I s would like to start with a hollow stem auger drilling, which perhaps is the least expensive uh, method of drilling and uh, by far the simplest and, uh, um, require, and the one that requires actually limited skills. Uh, in general, hollow stem auger drilling um, is very similar to uh, the traditional continuous flight auger system, except, as the name says, for the uh, larger hollow, um, hollow center. Uh, the basic of the methods are the same. So uh, a drill bit is attached to the leading section of the flight to cut the soil and uh, the flight acts as a screw conveyor uh, bringing the cuttings uh, up to the surface, to the top of the hole. As the auger drills into the earth, additional auger section are added until the required depth is reached. Then what happens uh, with the hollow stem auger? Um, when the hole is being advanced, a center stem uh, and plug are inserted into uh, the hollow center of the uh, augers. The center plug with a drag bit attached and located into the face of the cutter head uh, aids the advancement of the hole and also prevents soil cuttings from entering the hollow stem augers. Uh, the center stem consists of a rod uh, that, connect, that is connected to the bottom to a plug and at the top to a drive adapter that ensures that the rods uh, rotate together with the augers. Um, some driller prefers to advance the boring without this center plug, allowing a natural plug uh, of compact cuttings to form, but this is not really suggested since uh, the extent of this plug is difficult to uh, control and determinate. Once the augers have advanced uh, the hole at the desired depth, the stem and plug are removed. A sampler may be then lowered uh, through the hollow stem augers uh, to soil at the bottom of the borehole. If the auger have been seeded uh, into rock, then a standard core barrel can be used too. Um, hollow stem auger methods are commonly used in clay soil and granular soil above the ground level, uh, where the boring walls may be unstable. Um, indeed, the augers form a temporary casing uh, to allow sampling of indisturbed uh, soil uh, below the pit. So the auger, auger stem, uh, hollow stem auger drilling is uh, the ideal method for advancing uh, shallow boroughs in unconsolidated formation. Indeed, it allows uncontaminated sampling in unconsolidated soils. Um, it also allows uh, a rapid drilling into clay filled soil. It is an uh, easy method uh, it doesn't require high level uh, of uh, skills and it's uh, cost effective. Um, however, it also has some disadvantages. Uh, it's not really an effective drilling method um, in when boulders or large cobblestones or loose sandy soils are encountered and the depth that can be reached with this system is quite limited, about 45 meters uh, deep. Um, so let's see where it is here. Sorry. Um, what is needed on the drilling rig 
uh, to be able to perform this kind of technique. Uh, first of all, a rotary head with uh, high torque, it's necessary. Um, the, high, the torque uh, capacity must be calculated considering the desired depth and diameter that, it wants to, that the, the driller wants to reach. Um, then, of course, you need an auger joint, a cardan, to be added uh, below the rotary head uh, to connect the augers to avoid that uh, uh, turning force of the augers damages the, the, the rotary head. Then we come to the uh, reverse circulation drilling uh, by air. So uh, this one was probably uh, the most common means of drilling in mineral research in the past, but it's still very used in uh, South America and Australia, especially. Uh, it creates uh, rock chips that are logged by the geologist. So uh, how it works. Um, it requires um, special dual wall drill pipes with an outer drill rod and an inner tube located inside the drill rod. A compressor uh, forces air down the outer tube uh, of, the wall, of the, these double wall pipes and the air exits the drill string uh, just behind the bit. Uh, it can be whether a hammer or a tricon. Um, the air and, and cuttings after the bit are then forced across the face of the bit inside this inner tube and brings, bring back to surface uh, inside this, uh, this inner tube. Uh, from here, they arrive to the swivel head that in this case is located uh, under the rotary head and the swivel as, head is connected to a discharge hole. So the cuttings and air goes through the drill string to the swivel head and uh, through this uh, discharge hole up to a cyclone that is uh, mounted normally on a swiveling arm on a side of the chassis of the rig. Um, this is because the chips uh, travel at such a high velocity that must be slowed down first uh, using this cyclone. The return pipe directs the chips to glance of the inside wall of the cyclone chamber and then spiral downward to the top, to, to the bottom of the cyclone, losing velocity in the progress. A small representatives that you can see in the pictures, samples of chips are collected continuously while the advancement of the drilling and placed in plastic boxes with uh, compartments uh, called chips tray. Uh, these are carefully then observed and logged by the geologist. The RC, uh, the reverse circulation drilling, uh, provides virtually uncontaminated cuttings to this cyclone. Indeed, as the cuttings travel from the bit through the steel inner tubes and sample holes, there is no cross-contamination from other areas of the hole. So this is definitely a benefit. Uh, also, the RC uh, is a possible uh, in unconsolidated formation without casing most of the time. And um, it has also good performance in hard rock formations. The disadvantages on the other side is that uh, you can imagine these uh, rock chips are less accurate and detailed uh, than the normal core barrel in, uh, for example, coring system. And also uh, it can reach moderate depths, so about 3, meter, uh, 300 meters deep. Um, with our, regards to the uh, drilling rig, what you need on board for this system is what we call our RC kit, let's say. So you need this uh, swivel head mounted under the rotary head, connected to a uh, cutting deviator and to this discharge hole for, uh, uh, which leads the air and cuttings uh, to the cyclone that you can see on the side of the rig. Um, for separation and sample collection. Then, of course, you need the air compressor, which normally must have a high um, flow, about 1,000 CFM normally, uh, to start the actual circulation system. Um, then we have the conventional core driller, drilling, that probably is the more common and more known. 
Uh, it uses um, rapidly rotating drill bit and uh, uh, water and drilling fluid to uh, cool down and lubricate this drill bit. As the drill rods advance, the cylinder of uh, the rock, of the remaining of the soil, is gradually uh, enveloped inside the drill pipe. Uh, with conventional, well, with core drilling in general, uh, weight on the bit and rate of penetration need to be uh, constant to ensure that their core is not washed away. For example, in art rock formation, uh, too not enough weight risk to uh, polishing the bit, while too much weight can cause the bit to burn. So it requires skills and uh, knowledge, especially regarding the correct type of drill bit to be used. The advantages of core drilling is for sure the uh, very accurate and detailed um, samples that can be taken. And with this system, it's possible to drill at very deep, um, yeah, at great depths. Um, however, the core drilling is probably, at least for those I, I'm, I'm analyzing right now, probably the uh, most cost, the, the costliest one, uh, because it requires a full um, drill string. I just noticed that there is a wrong image. Sorry, that's the ogres. Um, anyway, it requires a full uh, and drill string and drill tools dedicated. And also um, another big disadvantage is the, um, due to the slow operations. Indeed, with the conventional core drilling, uh, the entire drill string with the core barrel must be hoisted out from the borehole uh, after every three meters, if you have three meters rods, uh, to take out the core sample and then again lower it back with the drill string to start the next run. So when you go to very deep, uh, to great depths, this will cause very, very slow operation. And to um, overcome this problem, uh, the wireline core drilling has been indeed developed. Um, it, this system uh, allows to obtain a core, bringing it to the surface and proceeding with normal drilling, all without removing the drilling tools from the hole. In, wire car, in wireline core drilling, indeed, a piece of equipment called uh, overshot is sent down to the hole to release and retrieve the, tube, the, the inner tube. The overshot and inner tube are then brought up back to surface using a, the wireline hoist, the wireline winch, allowing the rods and core bit to remain inside the hole. So uh, with the next operation, uh, the driller just need to um, lower down the inner tube, uh, lock it back into place and start again. Um, in this way, the wireline coring decreases the cost and time for obtaining uh, cores. As the average depth of well continues to increase, uh, the time and money saved by not having to remove the whole drill string uh, is substantial. The only special equipment required on the uh, lower end of the drill stem uh, is a core bit. To obtain a core after the core bit is placed, the core barrel assembly is forced down to inside the drill pipes using drill mat pressure. When the core barrel assembly reaches the lower end of the drill stem, a locking device holds uh, the barrel in place. Um, we've mentioned the drilling tools that are necessary for coring. Uh, in wireline drilling, the rods uh, are uh, special, are made by uh, fine high tensile steel uh, to make them as thin uh, so that the core inside can be as large as possible. There are uh, five major wireline tube size typically used. Uh, the uh, Q series rods from AQ to PQ. Uh, larger tubes produce, of course, large diameter rocks. Uh, co rock cores, and re but require more drill power to drive them. So uh, the choice of the tube size uh, that must be used is a trade-off between the rock diameter uh, desired uh, and the depth that the, re the rig in question can actually drill. 
um, regarding the advantages, as we saw already with the conventional core drilling, uh, we can uh, obtain very accurate samples and we can reach great depths up to uh, 3,000 or even 4,000 meters can be reached with the wireline core drilling. But uh, compared to the conventional core drilling, wireline has the big advantage of very fast operations thanks to this system. The costs remain a little bit high though. So <laughs> for what concern the drilling rig itself, uh, in this case, we need instead a rotary head with very high rotation speed, well, which can actually, it, it varies depending on the uh, diameter of the rods you need to use. It can go from uh, 300 RPM, for example, when we use GeoBor S system, up to 1,400 RPM, for example, when we drill by uh, NQ rods. The rig should then be equipped with a wireline winch, a wireline winch uh, which uh, should have a long cable, uh, long uh, at least the same depth that must be reached, of course, and also a fast descent to um, increase even more the productivity. And then the rig will, should also be equipped with a triplex pump with uh, high pressure to cool the bit. So, um, finally, I would like to uh, conclude by mentioning the um, MI8, the Massenza drilling rigs uh, that is present in, uh, in Estonia uh, of the company Steger. Um, this is a very good example of especially the last uh, drilling method I mentioned. Um, so it, ac it is actually a multi-purpose and highly customized drilling rigs because it's suitable to drill uh, water wells, exploration research in mineral research and geotechnical ap uh, application. It is able to drill a uh, wireline coring up to 1,000 meter deep with NQ rods, for example. Even it can also drill in uh, angle, so about 45 degrees if necessary. But at the same time, uh, this rig can also drill by continuous flight augers around tw 20 meters deep, but it can also drill water wells by, well, actually also mud and ETA jammer and is also prearranged for reverse circulation system. Um, this is because the f it has a lot of features. It is powered by a um, 170 horsepower diesel engine. It has 12 tons pullback and pull-up capacity uh, by means of hydraulic motors and high-resistant chain. It is equipped with a wireline winch with a 1,000 meter uh, cable and actually a, a fast descent of uh, to 220 mm, meter per minute. Um, it has a special rotary head which with eight speeds. It's a multi-purpose rotary head because it is able, it, is, uh, it has a very high torque, 10,660 Newton meter, but also a high rotation speed. It reaches up, up to 1,000 RPM. It is then equipped also with the triplex water pump for coring. Um, finally, here's just an example of the uh, samples that can be, that has been uh, obtained with this MI8 with the triple barrel PQ3 wireline method. Um, and well, we, we can see it's uh, very accurate and detailed, about 100 core recovery. Uh, and uh, here's just a comparison with uh, uh, other uh, equipment and um, maybe uh, older uh, techniques of drilling uh, where the core recovery were um, a little bit less. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Silvia. Thank you. Very thrilling presentation. Uh, any questions? Not right now. Oh, oh, one is, yeah. Please, I have a microphone now. Yes, yeah, Sylvia, yesterday I asked you, but you didn't, you hesitated to uh, give the answer. So maybe today in open audience, Let's you you are, you, are, uh, you are ready to say uh, how many drilling rigs in the Baltic rigs uh, oh. states we will see in the next <laughs> five years. I hope, as I, I, as I answered you yesterday, I hope many. <laughs> uh, 
Um, we, we know there are uh, good potential for our drilling rigs. Uh, we know many works are uh, foreseen in the Baltic countries. Uh, we have actually uh, many requests, especially for uh, smaller uh, geotechnical or environmental drilling rigs uh, than maybe the MI8. Um, so it's difficult to say a number, but we'll see, <laughs> I hope. Hundreds. Hundreds, oh, that would be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. any more question? No? Ah, oh, one is here. Are you only manufacturing the rigs or uh, are you offering your services as well, like drilling? No, we are manufacturer only of drilling rigs, yes. No, we don't make the <coughs> drilling jobs itself. Grazie mille Silvia. Grazie.